All welcome Dr. Brian John A. Magoli. So what is extracellular vesicles anyway? So these are uh, a way for cells to communicate with each other. Think of it as a Wi-Fi uh, in the 1980s. The scientists thought that this may be actually something more interesting than just being a garbage truck. This could be something that contains important particles and biomolecules which are used by cells in order to proliferate as well as induce different kinds of functions. Further about research and technology, scientists found out that cancer cells, among other diseases, use this as a platform to induce cancer to other bodies and separate them from one another. And so for the purpose of this study, I will be dwelling much more on what I call big and small extracellular vesicles. So big EVs are those that are larger, which I will be calling as SEVs, are those that are less than 200 nanometers in size. These, as I mentioned, are nano-sized studies, something that is nano-sized in animals. So what we did in um, genetic engineering was we usually uh, use a reporter. So the reporter is basically a flashlight attached to your subject, and it makes it glow. So moving forward. So our lab is both a cancer research lab, but engineering lab. So we developed a reporter which fused uh, fluorescent and biochemical uh, bioluminescence. And this allows so which we call for multi-resolution imaging of uh, EVs. So what happens is that when cells produce this protein, it attaches to the cell membrane. Commercial right. And since EVs are as well as high resolution and robustness in experiments. So this has been published um, in Advanced Sciences and actually it allows us to detect the amounts of um, extracellular vesicles released uh, not only in vivo, also ex vivo, in uh, organs, in tissues, cells, as well as in actual extracellular vesicles. So this is a multi-resolution engineered protein that allows us to track EV biodistribution. So this is a triple negative breast cancer cell line to speci uh, specifically mimic the triple negative breast cancer, TEM, the sizes really do differ, the small and the big extracellular vesicles, in terms of their radius. And by analyzing the amounts of these extracellular vesicles from these, uh, in these actually do participate in their tumorigenic potential. Using this, I analyzed in vivo models, uh, specifically injecting different EVs, with one, the normal, with CD44 lowered down in expression to see whether the lowering down of CD44 would affect the proliferation rate of tumor in animal models. When I depleted the amount of uh, CD44 in uh, the EVs, the, um, the one that had CD44 lowered down in expression did not significantly uh, differ in terms of tumor size. Could be one of the participating proteins that allows your EVs to be engulfed or uh, eaten by the cells. So this disrupts the Wi-Fi signal between the cancer cells and your recipient cells. As I mentioned, breast cancer is very lethal in terms of metastasis. Uh, very it goes specifically triple negative breast cancer. Uh, cellular approaches uh, to quantify the amount of EVs that have been uh, biodistributed to the different organs. Now this is uh, I part found of the function so the as a background, uh, uh, distributed in the lungs. But when I knock down the amount of CD44 in the lungs, in breast cancer, we're significantly lower. So this means that not only CD44 participates in tumor progression, mechanisms of how breast cancer EVs participate in the promotion and the development of breast cancer syndrome analysis in order to validate uh, this result, and it was very consistent. So currently, the market for cancer research is very high. It goes to about $200 billion as of 2022. And with this research, we um, identified that EVs revolutionize how we think cancer work. And by focusing on uh, the roles of EVs, we do have an opportunity to use this as a detection for early disease diagnostics, liquid biopsies by using EVs as a platform of how they participate in cancer progression, as well as using a stem cell-derived EVs for therapies. Thank you.